Hello, it's Duncan. This week we return to comparing the HTTP for K and KTOR HTTP libraries, specifically looking at throughput in request per second. I'd like to be able to say, stay tuned to see which is faster. But the truth is that on my laptop at least, both seem able to route and process requests faster than the operating system is able to accept them. So instead, stay tuned to see some interesting benchmarking code that should come in handy next week. And the answer is 1900 requests per second. Well, since all the fun with Gradle, I have actually got our HTTP framework test project running with Kotlin 2 here and with JDK, let's have a look, JVM toolchain of 21. One final bit of Gradle madness I'm not able to work out is that this Kotlin version here, which is the one set in this Gradle properties, is 2.0.0. And we're also using 2.0.0 for the Kotlin plugin serialization here. So it would make an awful lot of sense to use Kotlin version in there, I think. But that um, just doesn't work. And the reason being, if I hover, val Kotlin version string can't be called in this context by implicit receiver. Use the explicit one if necessary. I have no idea what that means. You can see I've even turned on the receivers here so I can see what it's saying, but I just can't see why I can't reference that. But anyway, I'll put up with that and let's go and look at throughput tests. In a previous episode, what seems like a long time ago, but I will link to it somewhere, we wrote this request lots HTTP and run lots functions, the job of which is to throw lots and lots of concurrent requests at a server. I've used that in this throughput tests where we create some orders and some customers and we build some HTTP for K routes for those orders and customers. And then we create a request that's able to go and fetch on that route. We have a method that allows us to check the response, which basically says we should be getting back an OK. And we call this request lots HTTP for K with a request count, which is a thousand requests. This handler say we want to run under Jetty this is the request that we want to make, and this is how we check the response. And in here, request lots HTTP for K, we create a server according to the type of the server we asked for here. We start it up, and then we use OKHTTP OK to throw a lot of requests at it. So if I run this, you can see a thousand requests, it's quite fast, and we made a thousand requests in 0.5 of a second, so that's 1800 requests per second. And this little bit here is a summary of any errors we got, and so there were none. There's a little bit of irritation that we're starting the server here on 8080, and that matches this 8080 here, but that's fine. It does remind me though that you'd have an interesting bug, which is if we get any errors in here, actually like, um, well, let's in fact say there was an error in here, and run this, then everything goes away basically forever. And it took me quite a time to debug this, but it was my fault. Let's have a look. It's caused, in fact, by this while true in here. We put this in an attempt to retry HTTP requests that failed, but obviously we should probably never have a while true in production code, especially in cases like this where we might always get some sort of trouble. So what should we do about that? Well, we should either set a retry limit or a retry time I think a retry limit might be easier, so we could say in here, four, and counting down is easier, so let's say five down to zero. Now if we use that as the block, now if we get an exception, we can always add it, but we can say if i equals zero, then we want to break out of this altogether. If we do, we don't actually have an R to return, so it'd better be an exception, and maybe we could throw too many retries, giving it the last issue that we had. What would two new retries look like? Well, if we create a class in here, you can see we know it's a throwable. I think probably it should be error, which is the type of throwable we shouldn't normally catch. And this is our cause that we can pass into the cause of an exception. And maybe we should give it the message to many retries. Oh, mess that up, of course. Just check what behavior that has. Ah, and we do need a return here somehow. Now we know that this will always count down to zero. So we know that if we were to get here, that would be an error. I'm going to say bad retry logic. Try that. And now 
with our error we get too many retries and that's caused by this illegal state exception which was our hello which came from our where is it here so if i take that out we should now be good if this run lots with production code rather than in our test tree i think i might want some tests around it itself so let's just remind ourselves how quickly that ran and the answer is 1900 requests per second well that's not bad but i don't think the jvm has had time to warm up so let's repeat it a few times the simplest way to do that is with repeated test rather than test so we say repeated test and say we want to run it 10 times and try that see every time we're starting up a new server but that's okay let's have a look at our output okay so repeated test was convenient but it's not very easy to decipher what went on we can see that we were getting errors here connection reset by peer and we can also see that we've got some quite large numbers in here compared to our first one which was 2000 odd so instead of running these repeats as individual tests let's put them into a single test so we'll return this to just plain old test and now if we say reports then we can take a range say 1 to 10 map that and we will get a list of reports and now we've got that list of reports we can say reports for each each one of those things is the report which means that we can do that with it let's have a look so now we have a whole lump of our servers and then when we're done here we go down the bottom of here okay so you can see that we had 2,000 requests a second and then 4,000 drop back down to 3 then 8 then 13,000 and then we started getting errors so this looks like the effect of hotspot because we've called the code paths a lot it's optimized the code in those paths and this i think is the effect of the mac tcp stack really not coping with the volume of traffic we're giving it now remember that when we get these errors we retry and that will drop our throughput down last time we were running this code we discovered that if we backed off for 30 seconds or so then these errors would go away i don't honestly know what to do for the best with them what i think i might try is just leaving them in there and seeing what the highest number we get here is before we start getting errors i should say at this point by the way that we're effectively just testing the server here so we're starting with an empty list of customers and we're seeing what happens with an empty list so there's no serialization going on there's no nothing at all really just routing while we try and decide what to do for the best let's reproduce this test with ktor so i'm going to rename this one to test http k and let's duplicate it as test ktor now obviously we don't want to be calling request slots http for k we want the equivalent for ktor so let's duplicate this as well and think about what it would look like for ktor so we say request lots ktor okay we would have a request count what about an http handler well for http for k we take the handler and map it to a server the equivalent thing for ktor is if we look in our main application here we create an embedded server with a particular type of base server or whatever we want to call it on the outside and this module here seems to be the equivalent of a handler so i think i'm going to copy this go back to throughput tests and then put that in there and this module then is application to unit so let's change this handler to be application to unit and then i think we might better say if i cut that out of there i'm sure there's a better refactor for this that this is handler if that were ktor application and then that would let me put we could say request lots ktor where the handler is that thing not that in fact let's better still we can make that there and call that handler and then we need to tell this its type which is application taking nothing and returning oh my goodness remind me unit ah unit because it mutates our application right not a very satisfactory refactoring so far but let's go back down here so that's our embedded server and 
the HBK version we were starting on port 80, 80 so let's just do that there and we can start it with HPVK we were creating a server and then using it I wonder whether we can do dot use here uh, no it looks like a server isn't closable so let's remember the server and we'll start it and now instead of this use block I think we can just basically say try and then finally server dot stop so this is starting up our server and then we stop it here our server config has become unused that's equivalent to this netty here let's create a parameter for it yes that's netty let's move it up where's it gone these are always the wrong size for some reason take that move it up to be the same as server config and then remove the server config and I suspect that we don't really want this to be a netty necessarily. We want it to be some other type that I'm not sure I can be bothered to find. Okay, so we're still using HTTPK's request and response here in order to use HTTPK's OKHTTP client. I'm not sure I mentioned in my previous comparison that one of the joys of HTTPK is that the clients use the same abstractions, this request and response, as the server does. In contrast, our customer HTTPK tests here use the handler to process a request directly, whereas the equivalent in Ktor has a client here with a completely different API. So we say client get and so on, rather than creating a get request and passing it to the client. It's a small thing, but I certainly prefer the HTTPK version. Anywho, coming back here, we can now try and run test Ktor. And see how we get on. Server starts up. Hmm. Wonder where all my output has gone. Okay. Ah, hold on. Kill that. I think in here we said wait is true, but I think we will not don't want to wait there so that we can carry on going down to this code. Go again. Ah, that's a bit better. Okay, we're getting a lot of debug out there, and that's going to slow things down quite a bit, I should think. Let's see what our result actually was if we scroll to the bottom. Goodness me, yes, there was a lot of that. Okay, here we go. Uh, so we managed 3,300 before we started getting errors. In fact, even quicker than that, including the retries. I think, though, we should get rid of all this trace. And no doubt there's an XML file somewhere in the world that affects logging. Let's have a look. Uh, resources, ah, log back, there we go. So I think if we just took the appender off altogether, um, well, we still seem to have quite a bit of info starting at the beginning, but we have lost all the logging for the routing, by the look of things. And here we are, we've managed 5,000 odd requests per second. In fact, 6,000 here before it started going wonky. Let's pin that one and go and run the HPVK version to remind us how that was doing. So that's this one here, run that. Okay, there we go, and how did it do? Well, we got up to 9,000 or so, which seems a bit higher, and the same sort of issues here with connections being reset by peers. And also, in fact, now we've got connection reset and broken pipes. Let's put these side by side and think about how to compare them. Now, in both cases, things start off slow and speed up as Hotspot gets involved. As they speed up, or maybe just as the total number of connections we've made increases, sooner or later we start getting errors. In this case, only a very few, uh, but later on, the errors seem to get worse and worse. The peak here is higher for hp k Hard to know what to say about the average. These numbers here are higher for Ktor, but HPVK was getting more retries there, which is going to lower its numbers. I don't really know how to treat this sort of statistically. What we really want is warmed up runs without errors. But once we've warmed up, it seems we start getting errors. What's not clear to me, I suppose, is whether or not it's a cumulative effect that gets the errors, or that we just start getting errors as soon as we get up above a certain rate. Okay, while I think I'll just refactor, let's first of all pull this as it's common out of both of those. 
and the same with check response. So it shows that we're doing the same sorts of things. And now if I make this lambda into a value, then I think I can take this thing and make it into a method. So this is going to be uh, do it. And yes, there is another one. Thank you. So now these both look the same. So they're both called do it, where this is generating the report by actually making all the requests. So I think if we refactor this to pull that down, then this is, uh, we'll call it maybe do run, or maybe just run, I don't know what, yeah, that'll do, right. So this now we can inline, that now comes out of the parentheses, and now we can work in here to decide a common policy for what to do when we start getting errors. What I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this into a lambda, can I do that? No, okay, but I can say, that instead of that, we'll say run it like that. And now we can say that this is the report that we need to yield back to the block. But now we could say that if report dot errors is not empty, now what? I wonder whether we just wait around because what we found last time was that sleeping for a bit helped clear the errors. So I'm gonna give it 60 seconds of sleep and maybe now we can run both tests and see how we get on. Let's run that. And move this back over here. And I think, yes, that is running there. So let's just wait. Well, that was taking so long I gave up on it. What I'm going to do instead of reporting everything, well, I will report everything down here, but I'm also going to say, do this print then in here where that is, oh, well, I want the whole of the with report. Let's do that. So that will let me see how many errors I'm getting as we go along. It's not nice, but it's a thing. So here we have KTOR warming up. Oh, up to 8,000 requests a second. Now we start getting errors. So now we'll back off. I'll go make a cup of tea. Okay, then here we are. Let's have a look. This is HC of a K and it's a bit confused because we're showing them twice, but here is the test run. You see, we've got up to 14,000 requests per second, but even waiting 60 seconds after we start getting errors here isn't enough to stop us getting errors here. Have you a look at KTOR? Well, the peak isn't so high, although we did get 11,000 there. I think given the errors, maybe all we can say about the two frameworks in this case is that they're both too fast for the TCP stack that they're sitting under to keep up. I have a sort of vague impression that HBFK is faster, especially as these numbers are high despite the retries, but I'm certainly not going to claim that that is statistically significant, a phrase that's difficult to say when you have teeth like mine. So having established that we can go too fast, I suppose we should look at their behavior when things bog down, which is to say when downstream systems are slow, and the libraries are having to wait before they can respond. That seems though like a topic for next week. So if you'd like to see that, where I guess once again we'll be comparing threads with coroutines, then please subscribe to the channel. Click the thumbs up so that my likes per day rate increases. And you can increase my sales per month rate by buying the book that I wrote in that price called Java to Kotlin Refactoring Guidebook, details of which are in the show notes below. Thanks for watching.